Farrell spent about 15 years going over U.S. census statistics and other studies and found that the wage gap exists because more men are willing to do certain kinds of jobs. He illustrates this with making speeches. It's men over here and women over here. <laughs> he separates the men and women and then asks people to stand up based on more than 20 job choices. Stand up if you work in a field that exposed you to the wind, the rain, and the snow for at least two years of your life. Stand up if you've done that. Stand up if you work more than 40 hours a week. If you work 50 Again and again, more men stand. Men stand up if you life. have more than 20 years' experience. Can Commute you? more These than These are all choices that bring higher pay. Trip. 14 men and about four women. That's why men earn more, says Farrell's new book. Women make less because they want different jobs. The women themselves say they're far more likely to care about flexibility. The men say I'm far more likely to care about money. In Why Men Earn More, Dr. Farrell finds that women have intuitively made better trade-offs than men. And real power, Warren explains, is about control over one's life or making the right selection of trade-offs. He explains this on PBS. There's basically 25 things that are different between what men do in the workplace and what women do in the workplace. Every single one of those 25 things leads to men earning more money but every single one of those 25 things leads to women having better lives. So um, here I have a 17 and 18 year old daughter. I'm saying to myself, you know, what do, I, do I want to help them earn more money? Or do I want to help them earn a better life, um, have a better life? And I realize that what I want to help them do is make their own decisions about how much money, how much, you know, how many trade-offs do I make? So I looked at never married women who have no, never had children and compared them to never married men who had never had children and found out that never married women who never had children earn 117% of what never married men who never have children earn. In other words, when you take the children, the motivation for men to earn money out of the picture, men earn less in the workplace than women do. Which, and children are also the motivation for women to, to, to stay home. Exactly. So you have, and so when you have never married women who have never had children, you find those women are making decisions a lot more like men. Never married men who have never had children, they're making decisions a lot more like women. So it's the decisions we make in the workplace that lead to the incomes we, we get from the workplace. They're making Is there a way for a woman to have it all? Farrell says yes. Many dads, Dr. Farrell finds, would prefer to raise children if their wives prefer to raise money. Dr. Farrell has asked this of tens of thousands of men. If you had another child, if you would ideally like to spend six months to a year raising that child full time, not working outside the home at all, raise your hand if you had that social permission. Full time. You get a man involved with nurturing and loving and connecting with his child and especially not worried about depriving him of economic security and boy you often see a different man you see a brighter more loving side of him a more nurturing side of him we have to start to saying to men and women both that the man who is a family manager or what we call maybe a house husband uh, we can love and respect that a woman who's successful and is career oriented needs to be able to feel comfortable quote marrying down does he make some legitimate points, some points that hit home? I think what Mr. Farrell does is to point out appropriately that sexism affects both men and women. Why? Men have learned to define power slightly differently. Feeling obligated to earn money as somebody else spends while we die sooner. Men sense this, but say little until asked. Stand up if you work in a field that is less fulfilling than a field you would choose to work in had you won the lottery. That's about 80% of the men and about 15% of the women. What a married dad needs to know, Farrell says, is that his wife will love him if he is raising children rather than money. So the message to men is there will be no love unless there's what? Money. There'll be no love unless there's money. Dr. Farrell's years of research for Father and Child Reunion on dad's effectiveness in raising children allows Dr. Farrell to be able to help women succeed at work without guilt about neglecting their children. He leads working moms to business solutions right in their own home. What Dr. Farrell is about is creating options for women to succeed at work and succeed at home, and therefore those same options for men. When taken together, it is easy to see why Warren Farrell was chosen by the Financial Times as one of the world's top 100 thought leaders. 
He was chosen by the late President Lyndon Johnson as one of the top young educators in the U.S., but he is more than a revolutionary teacher. He puts himself on the line, running his own business for more than a quarter century and becoming a candidate for the governor of California. For Dr. Farrell, there is no winner in a battle of the sexes. When either sex wins, both sexes lose. As a husband and father of two daughters, Dr. Farrell's research brings reality and research together with an interactive style that allows both sexes to create success at work and success at home. If you'd like Warren Farrell to speak on women and men in business and family, see his website at www.warrenfarrell.com and email him directly at warren at warrenfarrell.com.